Hello, and uh, welcome to the first bonus episode from Celluloid Fever Dreams. I uh, do all the artwork for the uh, podcast, do all the cover art, based around each one of the movies I do each week. And uh, I don't know, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I've posted a couple other short time lapses, but I realized they don't, I mean, what's the point of sitting through, you know, five to ten minutes of silence? So I've decided to try this where I post them, but then offer a little bonus material about the film each week or a little more personal stories about uh, why I chose that film or why the film's important to me. And uh, I don't know, I just seem like something fun to do. I mean, I like doing the, the drawings. You know, I like watching the movies. I like doing the artwork. And it's just a little little bonus something uh, for you guys, you know, for tuning in every week and sitting through all this. And, yeah, Elvira is... It, it's weird to say, but uh, a lot of the things I like about films and a lot of reasons I like the films I do, the films I... A lot of them I choose for the podcast can probably be traced back to her, her show, uh, Movie Macabre, back in the... Uh, mid you know, early to mid 80s you know I was, I was a weird kid I liked the fantasy films like sci-fi films I wasn't really a big fan of horror movies they just uh, you know freaked me out you know I, I didn't enjoy them they scared me I was I was I was a wimpy kid uh, basically let's just be honest but uh, she's one of two things that really changed that for me uh the other one being Fangoria Magazine, because one of the things I liked, and this is how old I am, there used to be a point where some films, because I remember the Star Wars movies doing this, they would actually do uh, television specials that would take you behind the scenes. And there used to be that, you know, before DVDs, you'd, you'd catch them on TV. Uh, you know, sometimes HBO would run them. Just little things like that where you got to see how the film was made. And one, I enjoyed watching those. And it, it, you know, and Fangoria Magazine, weird to say this, but it was one of those places that did that. It would show you how the monsters were made, how the blood was fake, how all that was done. So that was one way I kind of, you know, started getting into horror movies. But honestly, Elvira and a local TV show, well, I say local, it was uh, out of North Carolina. I think it was, at the time, I think it was ABC 45 but uh, they had a a uh, bad movie host. It was a, a what was his name? It was a redneck character. Uh, I want I want to say Billy Bob. But both he and Elvira would show these, you know, really low budget fifties and sixties films where everything was just bad and the special effects were bad. The monster was laughable. But between that, watching her every week make fun of these films, make fun of these monsters. And uh, you know, exposing me to these these uh, movies, as bad as they were, as silly as they were, as low budget as they were, it, it kind of helped. You know that, and the Fangoria seeing how they're made. Uh, you know the fakeness of it, the the fact that it, you know also around this time I started reading. Um, you know, I didn't when it first came out, I didn't see the movie Christine, but I actually went and read the book, and that kind of made me want to see the movie. You know, just all that, just all these little things adding up. But she and her show kind of played a real big part in that. Because, you know, seeing somebody make fun of the films, making fun of what's supposed to be the monsters and make fun of all that, it sort of drawed me in. And also, I just found the films entertaining. You know, they called them bad films. And this is, this is what, 10 years before Mystery Science Theater 3000 came out? And it, it was just amazing to me to to see these films, to think that somebody made these films. And and I didn't care that you could see the wires. I didn't care that, you know, it was a, it was a very obviously fake set, et cetera, et cetera. I, I got into them. I got into the stories. I got into just the craziness of them. I got into, uh, you know, just the imagination. I mean... All right, yeah, they're not the best movies, but come on. Cannibalistic Tomatoes? How can you not love that? How can you not love that? You know, the idea of, you know, everybody talks about, oh, you know, somebody had an idea of a, a tornado full of sharks. Yeah, 
three years ago now, somebody had the idea of cannibalistic tomatoes that were, you know, uh, killed off by bad singing. But, but I, I, I just fell in love with Elvira, with the, uh, you know, the look of the the character, with the the snappy patter of uh, of her making fun of the films. You know, mentioned in the uh, the uh, full episode, how much I, you know, what years later the macabre mobile that they built for her film is just you know, I just absolutely loved it, and you know, the it was a weird. I don't know. It, it, you look at look at today, and you can watch anything anytime. On you know, as long as you got the right streaming service. And at the time, you know, when when her show hit, we I didn't have anything. There was nothing like that. This was like the first time I'd ever seen, you know, hey, a lot of these films were just somebody making fun of them, somebody uh, you know bringing them to to our attention and and uh, mocking them, and it was just sort of a, a revelation. Her and. Uh, I cannot think of the name of that other show, but between the two of them, and like I said, I, I remember seeing Elvira first, and then later on they had, uh, you know, ABC Forty Five had the uh, other guy had that show, and you know the world is so different, and yeah, I'm, I'm old, but you know, <laughs> at at the uh, at the time it was. You know, I'll give you guys an idea. I'm older than video stores. You know, when I come up, the only way you could see the kind of films that she did, the kind of films that, you know, MST and, and Riff Tracks make fun of now, uh, was television. You know, the theaters, they might have them for a week. They might have them for uh, two weeks, three weeks. I remember uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, one of the local theaters had it for six weeks. And then it was gone. You know, like they might run it on TV uh, a year later or two years later. And so when the video stores come out, you know, it was just like a revelation. We could go and rent these films. We could see them again. Uh, you know, if it wasn't something you wanted to risk money on to the theater, you could, uh, you know, wait till it hit home theater and, you know, hit, hit a home video store, you could watch it. So, you know, for a lot of, a lot of the weird films, a lot of the, the little you know, 50s and 60s films that I love so much. You know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been exposed to them. I wouldn't have developed a love for them. I wouldn't have even known they existed for years and years. And as I said, you know, as I got into these weird films and, and uh, as I continued to read Fangoria, it was, all right, you know, let's let's catch out. You know, let's, let's uh, check more and more of the current crop of horror films and it really had an impact on my love of films and what I, I like to watch, what I still love to watch in films. You know, the little offbeat, the uh, the ones where even if you don't have have a huge budget, you're willing to take the risk, you know? Uh, you know, when I first... Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm really going to age myself now, but, you know, I'm of the generation that we had, like, three channels. You had, uh, you know, and if the president or somebody, you know, something happened, president had a speech, something like that, your your evening was ruined. You know, we didn't have DVRs, we didn't have anything streaming. Uh, if you missed an episode of something, we didn't even have, like, summer uh, TV shows. You know, uh, television season started in September, ended in May, and they would just rerun the same stuff between May and September. So that was your chance if you missed it during the first run to see it again. And of course, during the summer, there would be, might be sporting events, there might be special events, there might be movies they're going to show. Uh, so, you know, it's just a, a completely different world that my daughter's coming up in. And the idea that I can now, as I mentioned, the, the, uh, main episode, I can go back and I can find all these movies, and I can you know show her 
and you know see if she's gonna enjoy them the way I did and and it it's slowly starting to <laughs> turn out to be that it seems like we have similar uh film tastes we're actually going back uh my wife and I uh it's, it's probably been a couple of years ago now but uh she sat down we uh watched Goonies with her we watched Gremlins with her she's you know loved both of them we've done a few other movies that we grew up with from the time uh like I said I, I Attack of the Killer Tomatoes she and I sat and watched and she just laughed her way through it and loved it and uh and uh, she's also she she uh, has recently wanted to get into actual horror movies, which is something that her age I could not do. And uh, at first I was worried, but no, we've we started working our way through some of the classics. Uh, we've watched uh, the first Halloween, the first two Freddy movies. Uh, we've watched uh, oh lord, what did, my mind's just gone blank. I know there's another one we've watched with her. And she's just, yeah. You know, these films like scared the crap out of me as a kid, and she just watches them, and and a lot of times she'll point out things that we hadn't noticed, or you know, she's she's already got that sort of vibe of you know she understands it's fake, and and, and going back and watching some of them is really watching them with you know through her eyes has opened up. Uh, opened up a lot of things that I just never caught before. You know, we remember we went back and watched Halloween, the first one, and and I kind of forgot. And and uh, my wife talked about it too. It's like I forgot how slow this film was, like how far you know how how long it went before even somebody got killed, and how few kills there were in it. And we finally figured out that yeah, you know, the the movie we'd all been thinking of because it's like oh, there's a lot of you know violence in this, a lot of blah blah blah. It's like oh no, that's that's the second one. Uh, which we haven't watched yet, uh, for some reason. Uh, but yeah, she's she's starting to, uh, you know, get into these things much earlier than I am, and and it's kind of nice. And I think it's part of the inspiration for me doing the podcast is that I, you know, showing her these things, but also it's bringing up memories and wanting me to, you know, make me want to go back and watch all this stuff again. Uh, but uh, thank you for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to hear more of it, uh, let me know.